Let's hop into pure fiction. For this first side, we are going to be using Acheron. And then for the second side, we are going to let our good old Dot take care of it. Now for the buffs this time around, they're not like, none of them stick out too much that are like overly broken, right? Because like there's been like some really broken ones before. In my opinion, probably the second one's probably the best one, just because you can, you know, actually apply something more than just using your ultimates and your skills, right? So I did play around with multiple of them, but at the end of the day, I think they all kind of work. I mean, none of them were overly broken compared to the other ones. Although I do think the third one with Argenti is actually very, very cool. Because then you can just keep spamming his half ults and then keep action advancing him. I don't know if it makes too much of a difference though at the end of the day. But when it comes to this team comp in particular, so we're using Akron with Sparkle and then Asta for the speed boost and then Pela as the Nihility. Obviously this is an E-Zero um, not obviously, but this is an E0 Acheron, so we're not going to be getting our full buffs from just one Pela. Although, because it's pure fiction, you know, it's like you don't need all that damage. You can just go for a maybe higher rate of attacks instead of going for, like, the strongest attacks. Which, maybe that's a good reason you could put speed boots on Acheron. Although, since we're using Sparkle as our boots for Acheron, essentially, because every time our Sparkle turn comes up, that is our Acheron turn then there's no point of having speed boots in that circumstance. But when you're using a Harmony character, for example, in this one I chose Asta as the like the speed buffer. We could have also gone with Ron May. I did decide to leave Ron May for the dot side because I just wanted some stronger uh, buffs in particular for Kafka and Black Swan as opposed to just like the speed bonus. I figured that the speed bonus for this team might come in handy a little bit more because if Pale is faster, if Sparkle's faster, then we can get more debuffs and more actions, and that's more important than, you know, getting stronger ults. It's probably better to get more ults. Although since the enemies don't actually refresh into the new um into the domain expansion when you use Acheron's ult, it kinda makes it feel like you know, what am I wasting this massive 700, 800,000, 1 million ult just to clear 5 enemies. But, should be okay. Now we do have Dance 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 on Asta. So if she doesn't get her ult up every 2 turns, it's more like every 3 turns unless she gets hit a bunch. Or if she double skills and gets hit once or twice or something like that. But, we do get some good action advances throughout the entire thing. And one of the things is that if the enemies already have resolution on them, obviously the basic attack from Pela won't actually apply a stack of defense down. So what you can aim for is to just try to find an ice weak enemy and break them with Pela, because that way the break will just make up for the lack of a stack lost from not having, um, or, you know, not, ha yeah, actually, yeah, not having resolution on the enemy. Because if you don't have re re resolution on the enemy, then you can apply the stack, but if you don't, obviously you can't. Now, when it comes to this next wave, essentially, if we preferably we can if we can hold off our ult, yeah, that's kind of why I overcapped to three, or not overcap, but just capped out at three, and now we can save our defense down. Are going to lose a stack here, but then we can pop the ult and then just eviscerate the entire thing, and then probably take Japar's health down like maybe almost half or something. Beautiful. Yeah. Although, even though the idea of, like, the pure fiction runs is to just get rid of all the adjacent enemies as fast as possible, because then the main boss will just die with a basic attack, essentially, it, it is kind of cool having the boss go down to halfway in one move. Now, there is one cool synergy when it comes to Asta and Akron, and that's that the basic from Asta... Can actually give a stack to Acheron because it applies a burn. The thing is is that since you always want to have your dance 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 up with Asta's ult, pair that with the fact that you have so many skill points from Sparkle that you kind of can always do that if you want to. It makes it kind of, you know, sad when you're not skilling and not using dance dance dance. But if you do end up in a situation where you have to just basic with Asta, it is nice. Now here, all we have to do is just clean up everything, and then it's over. Jopard's been at 1% for quite a while. And even after this, we have a whole extra 
set of actions. And even if, even if we didn't, Asta would just push everybody inside the timeline anyways. If that had Akron, that would have been scary. No more shield, and Acheron finishes it off. Now for the second side versus Kakolia, I do particularly love when there is a weak and thunder weak enemy, like uh, for the whole thing, because then it's just constant breaks with everybody, and then when you pair that with Ron May, you get that break damage, so even though... Black Swan's skills and ults aren't going to be dealing too much damage themselves. If you can break with them, then more likely than not, you will just end up killing the enemy. Because if you have Ronmei's ult up, then the break damage from her just uh, is massive. And then, other than that, when it comes to having either a Hohuo or an Asta, they both work. They both work probably just as good. Um, I do like the Hohuo just because it makes the runs... Not necessarily smoother, because... Well, it does make the run smoother, because you don't die. But it actually, in my opinion, makes them a little bit harder to 40k with the healer. But Asta is pro or, you know, Huo Huo is probably one of those ex exceptions. Just because you get that energy, and you get that attack boost. So it might as well just be a support character. Because even if the buffs aren't as strong, you don't need massive buffs in Pure Fiction. Right, you just need, like, a, a higher quantity of attacks. So that energy probably is very, very helpful. Now, Kafka's ult is pretty much our, like, nuke of this entire fight. Whenever we have Kafka's ult up, the entire wave just dies. So it is good to actually try to save our ults in a way where we won't be wasting them. So I think I actually wasted Black Swan's ult the turn before, because what was the point of putting Black Swan's ult and then just using Kafka's ult to kill everybody? Because then we got no benefits from Black Swan's ult. Right now, for example, if these enemies had been taking damage under Black Swan's ult, they all would have just died instantly. So it's something to think about when you're using your ults with Dot in Pure Fiction. Because it's more times than not holding off on certain actions will actually lead to better results in the future. And as for the skill point neutrality of this team, I mean, we pretty much never get Ronmei's ult up early because we can't skill uh, out of turn. We pretty much have to always go skill basic basic. Uh, when it comes to uh, uh, Hohuo, we can more times than not just forego her skill completely and just forget about the healing and just heal maybe like once every wave or something because we don't have to worry about living too much and the extra basics do help proc kafka's technique and then also just give more skill points for black swan when she inevitably inevitably does want to skill because she's going to basic quite a bit but she also is going to want to skill that way we can get those aoe breaks and those AoE breaks, of course, with the break damage from Ron May, will actually help us clean up some, like, these stupid little bats or whatever. Now here, pretty much at this point, since we're already down to the second to last cycle, and we still have half a wave left, we really do need to focus on the bats and like killing all the enemies as opposed to killing uh, or dealing damage to the main Kokolia. So hopefully we can start tearing down these ads and then hopefully, hopefully. We'll cleanse here just so that way she doesn't get sent back. Because if it was her, if it started with her turn, then she would get uh, sent back due to the that 50% action advance thing. This would be really funny with Black Swan's E2. Because everybody just enters the fights with practically full stacks of Arcana. So everybody just dies. That would be way too, way too easy. But very cool tech, nonetheless. Or Eidolon. I don't know. Is it considered a tech? When you get a hidden aspect put into your kit now here if we basic 
if we kill in basic, we'll actually get the ult up. So I don't know what I was thinking because we're 25 energy off. So we just have to kill. Oh, wait, though, actually, no. It would be the break damage from Ron May that kills the bat. So I'm actually not sure who would gain the 10 energy. I need to go test that immediately to figure that out because I've been playing this game for too long to not know which one gains the energy. But anyways, we did make sure we got that attack boost, even if it probably didn't matter whatsoever, because once we kill that little thing, then the amount of damage we'll be dealing to Kokolia is just massive. So at this point, we're kind of just showing off. Showing off in Kokolia's face, just putting up a couple ults for no good reason. This one is important that it has to kill the enemy. Perfect. Now that it's done, it has the vulnerability, so now with these two extra actions... Then it's, yeah, 462 with Kafka's skill. Nice. Beautiful. There it is. That's the run. Let's see the builds. So, Acheron on her light kill. Debuff set. E0. Sparkle is uh, pretty fast. As for Asta, she is pretty fast too. On Dance 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 instead of the uh, Memories of the Past or Cogs. I do dislike Cogs in a healerless setup, even in Pure Fiction, just because the low defense stats just really hurt you. Very, very low defense stat. Uh, Black Swan and Kafka are both fast. Probably wouldn't hurt to have them a little faster, though. And, uh, yeah. Huo Huo also for some healing if we need it, but mainly for energy and attack bonuses. That is both the runs. That is the builds. Thanks for watching. Like the video, comment, and... Adios.